Hey guys, welcome back. So on the bench here, I have a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter made by Sun Gold Power. And this is just not an inverter. It actually has quite a few features, which makes this a complete solution for powering your home with uninterrupted power. So let's get it out of the box and take a look. First impression is that this is a substantial piece of equipment. It weighs in at about 50 pounds. And that's due to this right here. This is a low frequency inverter, which means instead of being driven by MOSFETs, it's being driven by large transformers. And that has several benefits. I guess first is reliability. You know, MOSFETs tend to break down under strain. Uh, also, this type of setup can surge up to 300% of its rated load. So this can surge up to 9,000 watts, whereas the equivalent one driven by MOSFETs usually is limited to about 200% surge capability. So in the intro, I alluded to the fact that this is not your typical inverter. And part of that has to do with the low frequency function. But, you know, most basic inverters, all they do is take DC in and spit AC out. And that is it. End of story. Well, this one definitely takes it to the next level. You can wire this either to the grid or a generator, and it'll take that AC power and do two things. It'll charge and maintain your battery bank, and it will also pass that power downstream to anything you have connected to this inverter. And after a period of time, when your battery bank runs low, if AC power hasn't been restored, the beauty of this is that this can call out to your generator. And if you have a generator properly connected and the ability to remote start, then that generator will start feeding this unit again with AC power. It'll top off your battery bank and continue supplying power to anything you have connected to it. And as if all that wasn't enough, this also has an auto transformer. So if you start getting power that is not at 120 volts, say it's coming in at 100 volts, or over voltage at 130 volts, it can step the AC power up or down to get it closer to 120 volts. And that'll prevent this unit from failing over to your battery bank. But ultimately, if the power is too far out of spec, then it will make that decision and fail over to your battery bank. So here's a look at the front of the unit. There's a bunch of status lights and an LED display to let you know what's going on. This here is the power switch. In the middle position, the unit is off. You can toggle it in either direction to turn it on, either with or without power savings mode. Right here is the battery type selector, and it comes shipped by default in position one, which is Gel USA. Now, I'm going to be using sealed lead acid batteries, which is setting number four. So I'm going to switch that right now to the fourth position. And this knob right here is for the charge current control. This can actually charge your batteries at 40 amps, 24 volts, or about 1,000 watts. And I'm only using a two battery battery bank, so I'm going to turn this down. All right, and here's a look at the low voltage side. We got the two main lugs that brings the DC power into the unit. Uh, this is a 24 volt unit, but they do make 12 volt and 48 volt versions. Uh, we got a cooling fan in the middle. We also have two jacks here. One is for the remote status indicator and the other for the battery temp sensor. Uh, this little guy here is for the auto generator start. So if you have a compatible generator, when your battery bank gets low, this will send a signal out to start your generator, which will send AC into this unit, which will charge your battery bank and also pass that AC on to any devices that are connected up to this. And lastly, in the corner here, we have a dip switch block. These control different preferences of the unit. Uh, switch four and five I'm most interested in for this test. Uh, switch four controls the frequency 
and in its current setting it's set to 60 Hertz so I'll leave that alone and switch 5 controls the priority so if you have AC power coming into this unit this controls whether you use that first and only revert to the batteries when that power is lost or if you flip it the other way it'll use your battery bank first and only use AC power when that battery bank is depleted. And here's a look at the high voltage side of things. Starting on the top, we have two circuit breakers, one for AC in and the other for AC out. In the middle, we have a standard 20 amp GFCI protected outlet. And here on the bottom, that's where the hardwired connections are. The first three terminals is for AC in and the other three is for AC out. Now I'm not going to be using these today, but you would use this if you wanted to wire this to a sub panel. Anyway, I'm going to reinstall this protective plate. I'm going to wire this thing up fully and I'll turn you back on in a second for the power up. All right, pretty much ready to go. I've got everything connected on the AC side and on the DC side, I have the wires connected to the inverter and one of them connected to the battery bank. Uh, for the batteries, I'm using two deep cycle batteries. They are connected in series. And all I have left is this one connection here, which connects right there. But I don't want to just connect it because there's several large capacitors in here, and they're going to charge up instantaneously, producing a large spark and potentially welding that wire to the battery post. So instead, I'm going to use this 12 volt light bulb. We'll connect it through one of the 12 volt batteries. We'll start by charging the capacitor to 12 volts. And then we'll switch it over to the 24 volts to charge it the rest of the way. All right, that was easy. It's charged. Move this over here. And that's it. So it should be safe. Let's see. Yep. That worked better than I thought. All right, let's give this thing a try. Right now we're on battery power only. So the unit just powered up. 119.9 volts, 59.9 hertz. And here's a look at the sine wave. Looks nice and clean. Uh, the status lights here, you can see this light lit up, which indicates we're powered by the inverter right now. So I'm going to plug in now to grid power. Let's see what happens. All right, grid power is connected. Uh, there is a delay built into this, so right now we're still running on battery power, and that's indicated by this light right here. When we switch to grid power, you'll see the shore power light light up, as well as the battery charge light, which just happened. So now we're on grid power, still at 60 hertz, 119.1 volts. So the voltage dropped a little on the grid, and actually the grid power doesn't look as clean. If you look at the peaks, there's a little ripple on all of them. So yeah. This seems to produce cleaner power. Anyway, let's break out a space heater. We'll try a resistive load and see how this thing does. All right, a few things have been added to the mix. I've got the space heater hooked up. I've also added an amp clamp to the battery bank so we can see what we're pulling. And also added a multimeter to the battery bank so we can see the voltage. Uh, we're currently at 27.23 volts. so. Let's give this space heater a try. All right, so we're pulling about a 750 watt load. Battery bank is at 26 volts and dropping. Uh, the sine wave looks good. All right, 1400 watts, 24 volts on the battery bank and the sine wave is a little bit distorted on the peaks, but overall, not too bad. I'd say that's a pass. All right, for the next test, we're going to try the microwave. 
This is a heavy inductive load. There's a big surge associated with it. So I'm going to do the right thing and put a meal that requires about seven minutes in there to cook. It's dinner time and I'm hungry and I want my favorite meal. So I have no doubt the inverter can do it. My battery bank, on the other hand, I think that's the wild card. This inverter will keep pulling from the batteries until we get to 20 volts, in which point it'll shut down. So right now we're on grid power. I'm going to disconnect that and then throw this in the microwave. I'm going to unplug from shore power. So now we're on the inverter. Okay, so far so good. We're about a minute and a half in. We're pulling just over 1300 watts. Uh, sine wave looks okay. I mean, there is a little bit of distortion on it. As far as the battery bank goes, we're holding at just above 24 volts. And we are pulling 65 amps out of that battery bank. Okay, we're at the two minute mark. I think we're going to make it. Things are holding pretty solid. We're still at just over 1300 watts according to the kilowatt. Sine wave looks decent. Uh, the battery bank is holding solid at 24.3 volts and we're pulling 63 amps out of that battery bank. But the cables are cool and so are the batteries. Okay, not too bad. My dinner's ready. As far as the system goes, everything did well. You know, the battery bank held out. I was kind of worried about that. Uh, the inverter had no issues whatsoever. So I'm going to plug this inverter back into AC power. I want to charge these batteries up. It's going to need it for the next test. All right, it's been about 30 minutes. The batteries are mostly topped off. We're at 27.1 volts in the battery bank. Still have the oscilloscope hooked up, currently pulling 1.3 amps, and we are on inverter power. So what I've got in store next is at the end of this extension cord. This is a 25-foot, 12-gauge cord, and it comes over here to this air compressor. And this thing requires a lot of power to start. Usually when I turn it on, the lights dim in the house. And I'm always expecting the circuit breaker to blow because this thing requires a lot. So let's see if it can do it. Wow. Okay, that actually works better on the inverter than it does on grid power. So that is definitely a pass. Had no issues there. Uh, the batteries held out just fine. And of course, the inverter did a good job. So we got a pass across the board. Uh, next, I am going to test using this Variac. I'm going to hook this up to the input of this inverter. And what this does is I can decrease the voltage to below 120 volts all the way down to zero or I can over voltage it up to about 135 volts. So what I want to do is mess with the input voltage and see that this auto transformer kicks in and tries to correct the problem. Okay, so I've got the Variac connected now to the inverter. Both meters are set to measure voltage. The one on the left is measuring the voltage output from the inverter. The one on the right is the output from the Variac. Now, I don't know for sure, actually, that this has an auto transformer. It is listed as an optional feature. So we'll find out in a second because I'm going to drop this voltage to 100 volts. And if it has an auto transformer, this voltage should get stepped up to 120 volts. And 
Yeah, it doesn't look like that's happening. So I don't think this one has the auto transformer. But if I keep going, the batteries should kick in. And there we go. So the inverter is on battery power. It's at 122 volts, whereas the Variac is only putting out 96 volts. So let's bring this back up to 120 volts. And it takes a second. The inverter doesn't cut over right away. It wants to make sure that the utility power is stable. Okay, and there we go. So we're back on utility power. Let's bring this up and see where it cuts out. All right, and there we go. So the inverter is back on batteries, 122 volts, whereas the Variac is putting out 138 volts. So not too bad. You know, the auto transformer is a nice feature. So if you're buying one of these units, I would definitely consider that option. Overall, this inverter did a great job and has some real practical applications in your home, whether you're on grid or off. This can easily be wired into several critical circuits in your home. So the next time you lose power, you don't necessarily have to roll that generator outside. And believe it or not, this is one of their smaller units. Their largest unit puts out 18,000 continuous watts and can surge up to 54,000 watts. And this one is only a 120 volt model, but they do offer 120 volt and 240 volt outputs. So I'd like to thank Sunny from Sun Gold Power for giving me a chance to review this inverter. And if you want to find out more about it, I'll leave some links in the description below. So I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.